Thanks for joining us here at AG Kolkata. We are the church for the open arms and we serve in the city of joy, Kolkata. It is our desire to reach out to those in need and to be instruments of effective change in a hurting world. If you like to learn more about us, you can simply go to www.agkolkata.org. We hope that you'll enjoy today's message. Our world today is in the grip of fear and panic. You know what I'm referring to. This pandemic, they're calling it an epidemic that is global. Uh, COVID-19 or the coronavirus has uh, affected approximately 130 countries. Over 150,000 countries. Cases reported worldwide and uh, an estimated five and a half thousand deaths. Not only that, the last I heard, it's already caused the economy, global economy, a loss of uh, three trillion US dollars. That's a lot of money, friends. I don't know if you know, it's hard to conceive. Trillion, you know, bad enough, million is. One followed by, what, six zeros. Billion is one followed by nine zeros. Am I right? And then trillion is a few more zeros after that. Three trillion. Why this fear and panic? Uh, without undermining the potency of the disease, it is said that uh, this doesn't appear to be as painful as many forms of cancer or AIDS. And why this panic? Why this fear? I think the answer is simple. People are dying. And who wants to die? No one wants to die. At least no normal person wants to die. I don't know how many of you have heard of the name George Bernard Shaw, uh, famous skeptic, uh, atheist most of his life. He once said, Tongue in cheek, and I quote, the statistics on death are quite impressive. One out of one people dies. And as we think about death, one has to wrestle with probing questions, deep questions. Some people like to ignore them, but you ignore the, these questions at your own peril. Questions such as, what makes life worth living? Of course, I'm not even referring to the question of what lies beyond the grave, but right now, what makes life worth living? Why do I want to live longer? In the Old Testament, one of the giants who straddles the Old Testament is the figure of Moses. You remember Moses is famous for what? He led the people of Israel out of bondage in Egypt towards the promised land. And if you remember the story, due to disobedience, most of those who came out of Egypt did not enter the promised land of Canaan. You, you remember that. In fact, an estimated 1.2 million men and women died during the 40 years wandering in the wilderness. There must have been a lot of graves in the desert. As Moses was surrounded by death, seeing people, you know, through the journey, falling the left and right, either through disease or war or pestilence, he must have reflected deeply on the fleeting nature of life. And as a result of his deep reflection on the fact of life and its temporary nature, he penned for us what is considered the oldest psalm in the Bible. In fact, probably the only psalm we know for sure written by Moses, and that is Psalm 90. And I want us to read a few verses from this great psalm, one of the more ancient psalms. 
Because in this psalm, we find the clearest statement of God's nature as the eternal God. One of the clearest statements we find in the entire Bible on the eternal nature of God. So as it comes up on the screen, let's read a few of the verses. I'm asking you to read with me verses 1 to 6 and then verses 10 and 12. Shall we read it together? Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting You are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet, you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and without. Verse 10. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Verse 12. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You remember we are exploring the nature of God, our awesome God through this year. And an essential aspect of God's nature that the Bible teaches us is that God is eternal. We find that explicitly stated in the psalm where Moses says, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. So let's look at that more closely. What do we mean when we speak of God as everlasting, the everlasting God? In the psalm, in a few death strokes, Moses paints a vivid picture of the eternal God. In fact, he works his way backwards. He talks about previous generations before us. And what happens, what's older than the previous generations? The mountains. He speaks concerning the formation of the mountains. What's older than the mountains? The creation of the earth. And of course, moving backwards, he finally goes on to say, from everlasting, before the beginning of the earth. Eternity past to everlasting, to eternity future. But we are first introduced to the everlasting God, the Hebrew name El Olam, in Genesis chapter 20 and 21. God has called Abraham, in fact, uprooted him from his ancestral home in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abraham has wandered from place to place through the desert, dwelling in tents, facing one adversity after another, and his life was filled with change and uncertainty. No one likes too much of change and uncertainty. It creates insecurity. It creates disturbance. And surely in his heart, Abraham was longing for something permanent. And in Genesis 21, at the end of the chapter, we see Abraham finds that stability, that permanence, near a well in the town of Beersheba. And in this, at this place, near this well, in a town of Beersheba, verse 33 of Genesis 21, it says, Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. So here is where Abraham learns that the God he knew and loved was El Olam, the eternal God or the everlasting God. The one who had controlled every circumstance of his life up to this point of time. And he was not just a little tribal God, He was the God, the creator God, who had been around from eternity past and will be around for a long time to come. In fact, he will be there for eternity 
to come. Now, the term eternal, the concept of eternity, is hard for us to understand, isn't it? How do you measure eternity? How long is forever? Well, we can use words to describe it, such as God is without beginning or end. And for our human understanding, we may speak of eternity past, hmm? thousands of years, hundreds, thousands, millions of years before we came onto the scene. We can speak of eternity, the future, hundreds, thousands, millions of years after we've come and gone. And that's for our understanding. But as far as God is concerned, please remember friends, there is no past. There is no present. There is no future. The eternal God is above time. He created time, but he himself is over and above it. He lives in one eternal now. So, what is yesterday, today, and tomorrow for me and for you are all the same to him. Can you grasp that? It's hard to grasp, isn't it? Because we live in time. God is not bound by time. But how do you measure eternity? How long is forever? I want to talk to you a little bit using an illustration and I'll uh, pull out that illustration in a moment. But I want to talk to you about the dot that fades and the line that never ends. Remember those two words, okay? The dot that fades and the line that never ends. What are we talking about? How do you measure eternity? How long is forever? Let me remind you again of a verse we read in Psalm 90 verse 2. Before the mountains were born or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. One more verse from Psalm 102. Verse 25, 27, I'm reading selectively. Long ago, you laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you remain forever. But you are always the same. You will live forever. I want you to see on the screen this simple slide which illustrates a point we're trying to make now. I hope you can see it. Can you see the dot? Yes? Yes? And you can see the line. The dot represents your life and my life on earth. The line represents eternity. And I love this, that tagline, live for the line, not for the dot. Let me just... Try and illustrate it again with a live illustration, okay? Thank you, Suraj. Okay. What you see there, I'm representing here by this wire. Can everybody see this wire? I have the wrong end. Give me that, that end. Okay. Can everybody see this wire? I'm sure you can. Okay. What color is the wire? Is it fully black? Okay. I want you to look at that. In fact, now you can take that off. Okay, now, now look at this. Can you see this? This is the dot that represents our life here on earth. Go on. Hold it up, my friend. Yeah. Go as far as you can. Go off the stage if you can. Pastor Jacob, come and help him. Go off the stage on this side. Okay. I want you to imagine. Can you see that wire? The end of the wire? Is it a long wire? 
Is it a long wire? Now try and imagine that wire goes on and on out of this building, out of the gate to the end of the city. Can you imagine that? Yes or no? It's hard to imagine. Try and imagine. And try and imagine this person keeps walking out of the city. He walks to the edge, goes into the Hooghly River, catches a boat and the wire continues through the Bay of Bengal and he keeps walking and walking and walking and walking. Of course, it will be a very long walk. And he keeps walking until he circles the earth. Is that a long wire? Yes or no? Come on, talk to me. How does it compare to this dot? Pretty long, isn't it? Huh? Now try and imagine a wire that goes around the entire globe. Is it longer than this dot? Now try and imagine that wire, somehow he finds a spacecraft. Suraj, I'm sending you on a journey now, okay? And he goes up to the moon. Is that long? And after he reaches the moon, he, probably lunchtime, he has lunch and he continues in that spacecraft to the sun. And then he continues to the edge of our galaxy. And he continues and he goes on and on and on. Now tell me, how long is that wire compared to the dot? Thank you, you can roll it up. My brothers and sisters, our life on earth is a dot compared to the line that goes on and on and on and on through eternity. How far will that wire finally go, that line finally go, do you know? Do you, can, can you guess? It never stops. It goes on and on and on. That is eternity. It never ends. Right now, all of us, every human being on this planet, we are living in the dot. No matter how long you live. Got it? It's either a small dot or a big dot. But it's a dot. We're living in the dot. But here's the question I hope you leave with that burns deep in your soul by the end of the service. Are you living for the dot or the line that never ends? You see, beloved, when we view our short life today, the dot, in the light of the long tomorrow of eternity, the line. Tell me what makes better sense? To live in the light of the fading dot of life here and now or to live with the unending line of eternity in view? That is what Moses is asking us to consider when he says in verse 12 that we read earlier of Psalm 90, teach us to, read it together with me, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. What is he saying? Brothers, sisters, live life in the light of eternity. Live life in the light of eternity. What is the life that God is calling us to live? In the light of eternity. I like to capture it in this phrase. Eternal life in God's everlasting arms. Eternal life in God's everlasting arms. What does it mean to live for the line and not for the dot? 
What does it mean to live in the light of eternity? I want you to hear this promise of Jesus in John chapter 5 verse 24. It's for everyone. Every human being on this planet. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, read it with me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. I want you to notice that small three-letter word, H-A-S. What does it say? What tense is it? Present. Get that. Jesus offers eternal life as a present gift today. Today. He doesn't tell us to wait till we die to possess eternal life. You know why? Because eternal life is not just length of life. That is just one aspect of eternal life. Eternal life is a quality of life. A life lived in close friendship with God through Jesus. And he promises that the blessings of this eternal life are made available to you and to me. When? When? Today. Everyone say with me, today. Today. Turn to your neighbor and say, today. 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 Listen to this promise from the, the lips of the everlasting God. Deuteronomy 33, verse 27. Let's read it together. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive out your enemies before you say, destroy them. Let's read it again. The eternal God is your, you know what refuge is? Dwelling place. And underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive out your enemies before you say, destroy them. What does this mean? I want to briefly unpack this and then close. What does this mean? Because he is the everlasting God. I want you to get these three things. First of all, God is never taken by surprise by what happens. For you and I, the coronavirus is a, oh, it's a surprise. God is never taken by surprise. You know why? God knows the end as well as he knows the beginning because remember what I said? He has already lived in it. There is no past, present, future for God. He lives in all dimensions of time simultaneously. He knows all my tomorrows. There are no surprises with him. He knows that the pleasures that are awaiting you, my sister, he knows the tragedies we will encounter, my brother. He knows the choices you will make. Even the bad choices. Even the sins we commit, he knows. And he's made provision ahead of time. And here's the good news. If you love him and want to please him, he has a plan to bring it all together for good. All your choices, every circumstance, whether it happens internally, within your family, within your uh, place of work, within the environment outside, God is able to bring it all together to fulfill his plan for your life. Amen? And because God already knows what tomorrow holds, we can face the future with confidence. And courage. Amen? I don't want to make light, light of the coronavirus scare, friends. You know, it's appropriate response. But we don't have to be afraid. Hello? You don't have to be gripped by fear. God will be there tomorrow. Whatever it holds. Whatever it holds, God will be there. And he'll be there ready to reveal the next step he wants you to take in his plan for your life. 
because he is the everlasting god he is never taken by surprise secondly because he is the everlasting god god isn't bound by a calendar or clock like you and i <laughs> i hope that's not bad news god is not bound by a calendar or clock his timetable rarely agrees with ours hello how many of us have ever had a problem with god's timing i have and still do lord when will you do this lord why hasn't it happened some of you are smiling you've been there lord i you said you would do it you know how long did it take god to create the world tell me Seven days, whatever that means. In the scripture, it says seven days. Seven days it took God to create the universe. It's a massive job. Seven days. Remember when He was bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt into Canaan? Does anybody know how long the actual journey was supposed to be? Oh, no more than forty days. How long did they take? Forty years, God stretched out a forty-day journey to forty years. You would think it's a waste, but God, they were not ready. The New Testament. I'll give you just one other illustration from the New Testament. Remember, John chapter eleven records uh, Jesus. God knew that among his closest friends. Lazarus, Mary, Martha. There was a major crisis. Lazarus was sick unto death. Jesus was one day's journey away. You know how long he took before to get there? Four days. Does it sound like how he responds to you sometimes? I hear us why. We read it in Psalm ninety, verse four. Read it with me again. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. The same thing is echoed in Second Peter three eight. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends: with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. I want you to see this. It's tongue in cheek humor. Put uh, this, okay? So it's just a cartoon. Interesting, isn't it? That's baby Jesus, and Mary is telling Joseph. Jesus keeps saying to the Lord, uh, uh, "A day, a thousand years is like a day." Then when I ask him to clean his room, he tells me he'll get to it in a second. By my calculations, he's not going to do it for five days, nine hours, nineteen minutes, and thirteen seconds. A smart Alec young man once asked God, "God, is it true that to you a thousand years is just a minute?" That's true, God replied. Is it true that to you a million rupees is just like one rupee? That's true, God said. Well, you see, God, I'm a poor man. I was wondering if you could give me. A thousand rupees. Sure," said God. "Can you wait a minute?" I think many of you got the point. I was not sure you would, but that's great. See, friends, God knows what He's going to do. He always has a plan. His plans are certain. but he is never in a hurry god is never in a hurry but he is also never late amen amen very quickly because he is the everlasting god his arms never get Tired. 
Are you glad for that, friends? Moses said in Deuteronomy 33, the eternal God is your refuge. He is my dwelling place. We need not fear the present nor the future because we are safe and secure in a strong, loving, everlasting arms underneath us. Amen. I love this verse in Isaiah 40, verse 28 and 29. Read it with me. Very familiar. Have you never heard? Have you never understood? Come on, read it people with faith. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weary or weak. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak, any weak here, and strength to the powerless. Amen. El Olam. Say it, friends, with faith. El Olam, my everlasting God. He is the God of the beginning and the end, our dwelling place. He's the God with the everlasting arms, and his everlasting arms are always sufficient. They are never exhausted. We can rest in his everlasting arms and enjoy him forever. Hallelujah. This is his promise, friends. The everlasting God promises us an unending life of perfect, endless love in God's everlasting arms. If you look at the bulletin message this week, the words of a song that many of us, I think, the previous generation would have heard and loved, sheltered in the arms of God. Amen. So let the storms rise up. Let the dark clouds rise. They don't worry me, for I'm safe within the arms of God. Friends, as we bring this message and the service to a close, I, simple question. Are you living for the dot? Why is not here anymore? Never mind. Or the line. Are you living for the short today or the long, unending tomorrow? Are you living for time or for eternity? I want you to listen to this before I close, okay? You know, any investment bankers here, financial planners here, well, when you go to investment bankers, financial planners, you know what they tell you? Their advice is, don't just think three months or three years ahead. Think 30 years ahead. Yes? Well, Jesus, the greatest investment counselor, takes it further. You know what he says? Don't ask how your investment will pay off in 30 years. Ask how it will be paying off in 30,000 or 30 million years. Hmm? That's not only true of how we invest our money, brothers and sisters, but every part of our lives. How are we investing our God-given resources of time, our talents and possessions? In this life, God allows us the opportunity to make investment in the bank of eternity. Get this. Like any other bank eternity will hold for you only what you've poured into it during this life no more no less I quickly want to close with this illustration some of you would have heard it before Little over 60 years ago, there was a name that became a legend. Some of you have heard the name of Jim Elliot, an enthusiastic young American missionary, just 28 years old. He had been married for just three years and in fact had a 10 month old daughter when he went with four young friends of his to share the good news with natives deep in the jungles of Ecuador in South America they didn't have a long career they barely got off the little plane when these savage Indians 
kill them brutally it is said the widows of these young men followed their husbands to the same place and showed genuine real love to those who had murdered their husbands and the rest is history today that entire region all of the tribes have become followers of Jesus this episode became national news across the united states many unbelievers response was what a waste of a young life jim elliot and his friends were foolish to give up their lives at such an early age <coughs> friends it's now over 60 years since that episode and as we read the the impact of that tragedy over the decades jim elliot's life motivated literally hundreds to respond to the call of god to go to the unreached only heaven knows how many millions have come to christ and will be in heaven as a result of the massive movement of people who are inspired by that one life they opened jim elliot's diary remember what i said many people said what a fool what a waste jim elliot penned these words in his diary i actually saw a photograph of his original diary where he's written these words which have become immortalized he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose thanks for listening to this message from ag kolkata we hope you would stay connected by following us online you can find us on facebook twitter and instagram by using at agc kolkata we would love to know how this message has touched your life please take a moment to share your story by emailing us at stories@agkolkata.org at hope you have a great week ahead